So I've got a bit of a skincare haul. I'm not sure if I'll even film this moving forward. I just figured I had a few boxes come in like uh, this week. And then I had a few purchases that I made a few weeks ago, like sort of six to eight weeks ago. So I thought I'd combine all of that in one video just to talk through why I bought some of this stuff. Uh, it is a combination of like pharmacy, kind of mid-range Sephora brands up to some luxury products as well. So yeah, I thought it might be interesting if I talk through what I bought. So first is a repurchase. It's one of my favorite cleansers from drugstore pharmacy. It's the Benzac pH control cleanser. Um, it just has a really pleasant, luxurious texture, cleans my skin really well, but it's also non-stripping. So I think it's sort of part of like an, an acne routine, but you can definitely use it as just a general day-to-day -day cleanser as well. So I very much enjoy using toners and I've actually never tried the Thayer's toner. So I thought I would give that one a shot, so, which Hazel sometimes has a bad reputation, but it's always worked out well for my skin. And this is, I guess, a cult favorite product. And I also ordered their Milky Toner just to try because milky toners have become kind of like a standout category in skincare. Lately, I've also been enjoying milky or cream cleansers. So I thought I'd try the one from Aven. It was just a good price and they tend to be a good brand. I'm jumping back to Thayer's. I forgot I also ordered the milky cleanser to try because again, I've just been enjoying milky cream cleansers lately and I figured I need to explore some drugstore products a little bit more. Now, I think this might be an Australian brand. It's the Clear Skincare Clarifying Mini Peel, which contains eight, which contains 8% salicylic acid, so that's quite high, but I'm pretty sure they've used encapsulated salicylic acid, so I'm hoping it won't be too aggressive. And this is designed to be a wash off kind of treatment product. And lastly from Priceline is the Benzac Microbiome Equalizing Moisturizer. I actually think I saw a dermatologist, um, I can't remember who, mentioned on Instagram. So I figured that if I remember, I'll throw it up on screen. Um, good enough for me to, so that was good enough recommendation for me to try. Next up, I bought a few things from Mecca, which if you don't know, is kind of like an Australian Sephora, but probably a little bit better, maybe closer to Space NK. So Mecca, Mecca has their own brand of product that is part of like Mecca Morphosis within their Mecca Cosmetic within their Mecca Cosmetica range or branding. They just brought out this 20% Panthenol Barrier Repair product, which I thought sounded super interesting. So I grabbed that. Next, I wanted to try the new cleanser from Dr. Dennis Gross, the Creamy Cleansing Oil. And if you didn't know the kind of reason for my handle or username on both Instagram and YouTube, Sam by the Counter, it's because my skincare journey, skincare love started by going to the Clinique counter. I'm not sure that Clinique is that relevant these days. Um, I know they've had some kind of viral products, but their whole skincare line has probably fallen off a bit. Whenever Clinique releases a new product, it always piques my interest out of nostalgia. And I thought this product actually sounded super interesting. It's their Smart Clinical Repair Overnight Recovery Cream and Mask. So yeah, that just sounded interesting to me. I hope it works out just as a really moisturizing overnight sleeping mask. And Mecca has a rewards program that they call Beauty Loop. So this was basically like a gift with purchase and they have a few bonuses that they send out throughout the year. The bonus product this month, which I actually think is super cool, was the is the Dr. Jart Intensive Soothing Repair Cream. So I think that's a great product to get for free because I've actually been keen to try this. Next is a couple of products from Chanel. One I opened immediately, so I've already unboxed it it's the new Chanel or the, it's the new number one de Chanel eye serum now the reason I wanted to buy this is it has a super cool applicator that I haven't seen before I'm pretty sure it's a Chanel exclusive applicator and the next thing I bought was their new mask which is kind of like a physical exfoliating mask it contains uh, camellia seed shells and jojoba beads and mattifly and mattifying clay so I'm a fan of having some sort of physical scrub in my routine because ultimately scrubs just refresh and brighten my skin in ways that acids don't. So yeah, I'm looking forward to trying this one. And then as more of like a barrier repair product, this I've bought several tubes over several years, um, but I haven't used it in a while and I started to miss it. It's the Sisley Black Rose Mask. This one I already unboxed and just started using. Just a bit of an indulgent treat. <laughs> Next up is Dior and they always have such nice packaging. So I won't unwrap these right now because I'm not actually planning to open them for a few weeks. But I got the new Prestige La Lotion and also the One Essential Skin Boosting Serum which is sort of like an anti-pollution serum. 
This I bought more just for indulgence because I've really been enjoying milky products like milky toners lately. And this I just thought was interesting. It's been on in their range for several years. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Dior skincare. A lot of it just doesn't work out for me. But I really enjoy the Capture Total Serum. And I know they tend to market that as a good layerable product with this. I was just curious to see how it, they work together. This packaging is amazing and the texture looks so nice. Next up, I bought a few things from Dr. Sam Bunting. I really think she, I really think she's made some of the best general sort of skin health products around. I really wanted to try her new vitamin C serum that also has Ectoin and some NAD ingredients for essentially like skin vitality and energy. I also picked up her micellar water because I love using micellar as because I love using cleansing waters as a toner. And I also picked up another tube of the Flawless Moisturizer Intense. I've already got one in rotation that is almost empty and I just wanted to have a backup because this has become one of my favorite evening moisturizers. Just jumping over to hair for a second and this I bought in store at Mecca maybe three weeks ago. It's, it's the new Briogeo Yuzu and Plum Style and Treat Sculpting Creme. And this is, this is more of like a kind of cream putty texture. It has a pretty light but fresh kind of zingy fragrance and it does actually smell like a cross between plum and citrus. So I very much enjoyed the scent, but it's not overpowering at all. And it has like a medium hold, not matte, but also not glossy kind of dry down. It just makes my hair look quite natural. Moving on to one of my favorite brands, Biologique Recherche. I ordered a mini of their micellar water to try because I just wanted to see how it sort of feels in my skin. It does have like a spearmint component. So I was worried that might feel too minty or aggressive, but this is actually, I've, act I've opened this already and have used it a few times and I absolutely love it. So I see myself buying a full size to use as a toner. It's very much like a full skincare product. It has like peptides in there. I also picked up a full size of Mask Vivant, which smells really bad. If you're Australian and you eat Vegemite, it's exactly like using Vegemite on your face. But this is a cult favorite product that people rave about how it sort of just maintains clarity in the skin. So I'm keen to give this, so I'm keen to give this a proper shot and use it probably twice a week. Now, some people have said that Mask Vivant can be a little bit like, can be a little bit strong on the skin. So I also, so Biologique often suggests mixing it with Mask VIPO2, which is like an anti-pollution mask. This is a much more creamy kind of gentle texture. So I bought this more as a mix in. And although I'm definitely not a fragrance connoisseur, the last couple of months I've really been hit with a fragrance bug and I've gone a bit berserk on buying fragrances. So I thought I'd quickly run through the ones I purchased. It kind of all started with Celine Parade, which I, which is now, which now I've had for probably two and a half months thereabouts. I originally smelt this about a year ago when I was randomly in Celine's store and it has like an acquired scent. To me, it smells a little bit like cleaning product, but in a good way. Um, so I've definitely been enjoying this one and it's the type of fragrance that I think people notice in person. I'm not sure everybody loves it, but at least they kind of sense that there's some sort of interesting fragrance around them. So yeah, I don't know. I enjoy that because it's a little bit different. I also bought the Bully 1803 Yuzu fragrance. First of all, the bottle is amazing. It just really has that apothecary vibe. I love Yuzu as a note, and this is very true citrus Yuzu, so it's quite a bright, refreshing, very lemony kind of scent. Um, on my skin, it does dry down a little bit sweet, but also still quite fresh, and it kind of reminds me of like a lemon lozenge, if that makes any sense. The only thing is that I'm pretty sure these fragrances are water-based, not alcohol-based, and I don't get the best longevity out of these on my skin. Um, at the start, the scent is quite noticeable, but it tends to fade. So I tend to use this more as a layering fragrance or just if I know I'm going to be in an environment where I don't really want to overpower the room. On kind of the opposite end of the spectrum is this from Parfums de Mali, I think is how you say it. Uh, this one is called Altair, Altair, quite like a gourmand, I think is the phrase um, where it kind of smells like, where it kind of smells like a really deep vanilla but it's also, I find it to be quite a complex scent. So there are a lot of different notes in there, but it just reminds me of kind of bakery, but 
with a masculine lean to it. So while it's still sweet, it has kind of, it has a real depth to it. And this one I think probably would suit evening best um, and probably leans sort of, and probably leans for winter because it is quite a deep fragrance. But this has probably become one of my all time favorite scents. I just have to be light handed when applying. Second to last is Oud for Greatness, which I believe has a real cult favorite following or status, especially in like YouTube and social media. It is an oud fragrance, um, and I'm not sure if this contains synthetic or natural oud, but it is definitely deeper than a lot of the other fragrances that I have in my collection. And to me, it opens and starts quite, quite like truly oud based, but then it ends up drying down to a very kind of heavy, almost soapy fragrance on my skin. So I can get away with this during the day, but I have to be quite light handed. And I think it would probably suit evenings better. I, I enjoy this one and I definitely understand why it's possible popular but personally I prefer Tom Ford Oud Wood which is maybe a little bit more generic and like western smelling but I think I can get away with Tom Ford more in a day-to-day -day environment. This is probably a little bit more like special occasions or evening specifically. The last product it's the X Nilo X Nihilo I don't even know how to say it um, Outcast Blue. So this is also an Oud leaning fragrance and actually reminds me of a lot of Oud for Greatness that I just showed. This on my skin ends up being a little bit fresher and it doesn't dry down quite as soapy, but I also don't get quite as much longevity. So yeah, Oud for Greatness, definitely you get much more of a heavy scent out of it. Whereas this I think would be fine for daytime. Now this one I actually ordered from Liberty London because I don't think the brand is available in Australia. So I was really happy to find that Liberty shipped out here. And I think Selfridges also sells fragrances to Australia. So if you're looking for some niche product and you live in Australia, then um, Liberty London or Selfridges both offer excellent service. Liberty also, I think, has free shipping to Australia from $300, so that's always appreciated. Now, a bit of a story time on this. Um, I was in Los Angeles last September, and I went to Saks Fifth Avenue, and somebody had walked past with this scent on, and I asked them what they had on, because I really loved it, and they told me. And then I went over to, like, the fragrance counter. Now, I found, like, the customer service there super weird, because originally I was exploring the scents. They sort of showed me the testers that they had, and then they were well, like it comes in a 50 mil comes in a 100 mil and I was like no worries I'll buy a 50 mil because I didn't want to commit to a 100 just in case I didn't like the fragrance over time so he goes out it turns out they didn't have stock and then he comes back and is like oh the fragrance actually only comes in 100 mil the 50 mil isn't produced anymore I found weird because he just told me that the 50 mil was normally available so that kind of put me off buying it because I was like now you're telling me it doesn't even exist just because you don't have it in stock so yeah that wasn't a great customer service experience like I know it's their role to sell product especially if they can sell a higher value at 100 mil they'll probably try but like I would rather you just say you're out of stock and I can come back at another time or order online or whatever um yeah so that made me just not buy it and then I just put this fragrance out of my head because of that customer service experience but then I saw it pop up on Liberty London in a 50 mil and decided and decided to buy it just from the memory of the fragrance because this actually smells so similar to Oud for Greatness I probably wouldn't have bought it just having them side by side they end up smelling much closer to each other than I remembered so yeah Oud for Greatness though is just a much heavier scent whereas I think Outcast Blue is a little bit fresher and lighter on the skin. So that's probably too much fragrance talk considering my channel is skincare, but hopefully a couple of you were interested. Anyway, that's my entire haul. Again, I hope it was somewhat interesting to see. If you have any questions about the products, let me know in the comments. I've really only opened a few of these. A lot of the others I'm just going to work through over the next couple months. But yeah, let me know if any questions have come up and I'll see you in the next video.